Well, greetings and welcome to today's video, uh, which is going to be rather unusual in that it is the first purely technical video that I have released in a long time. Now, I've made several uh, previous videos on output transformers, but in this one I'm going to focus on a very simple and basic measurement that we can make of the output transformer, which will tell us exactly what output tube and what uh, speaker impedance it was made to match. Uh, w let's face it, when you get an output transformer like this, it may come with literature, it may not, uh, but sometimes the literature might not be correct or clear, or if you have no literature, you just have to simply guess as to what type of circuit the output transformer is uh, appropriate for. So using very basic tools that I think all of you have, uh, number one, we're going to need a tube manual, and if you don't have one, you can get the information off the Internet. We're going to need a really nice output transformer, in this case, uh, this beautiful Ed Core that was sent to me by a very generous viewer, and one, or better, two separate volt and ohmmeters. And finally, if you have a Variac, that's great, it'll be very useful, but a lot of you don't have Variac, so I'm going to show you a method to get our measurements using just a simple 12 volt center tapped filament transformer. Now just about all of you have one of these laying around I would hope, or you can get one on eBay. Okay, so no special equipment really, just basic stuff, and I guarantee you at the end of this video you will be able to measure and completely accurately analyze any output transformer that you can find. If that sounds interesting, then let's get started. Now our test subject is going to be this gorgeous EdCore output transformer. Now it came with all the information necessary uh, printed on it, but I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to act like that information didn't arrive with it. And we're going to take some measurements and draw up our own chart of primary and secondary impedances. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how you can determine what the appropriate primary impedance is for your amplifier circuit and with that determine exactly what speaker impedance is going to match the output of that transformer. Now in this video we're using an output transformer that is not installed in a chassis. Uh, if yours is, there's no need to remove it. All you have to do is flip the chassis over, unplug the output tube or tubes, and uh, unplug any speakers that are connected to it, and in effect then you will have isolated the output transformer and you can perform the test exactly the same way I'm doing it with the output transformer still installed in the chassis. Step one will be to uh, identify the leads. Now what is just standard coloration is in the secondary leads that red is for the B plus. This will be the center tap and blue and brown will go to the plates of the uh, output tubes. In this case it's a double-ended output transformer. Okay so uh, I stripped off the uh, insulation from the end of the red blue and brown primary wires. Next we'll take a look at the secondary output leads and um, the color uh, coding generally is that white is the common wire for all different speaker impedances. So I've stripped off uh, some insulation from the white and then I have three other wires, green, yellow, and orange. I'm not sure what impedance each color is appropriate for. That's something we're going to figure out with our measurements. But uh, to make the measurement uh, easier to take, I've stripped insulation then off the tips of all uh, four of the secondary leads. In case you're wondering why this transformer has two extra leads, white with blue and white with brown markings, it's because this is an ultra-linear output transformer, probably intended for hi-fi use and ultra-low distortion. Uh, to achieve that, uh, these transformers have two extra leads like this 
that are dedicated for the screens of the output tubes. Okay, now we're not going to be using these leads at all today in our measurements, so we'll leave the insulation on and focus entirely on the two plate leads, the blue and brown. So let's look here at a quickly drawn diagram of the output transformer. On the primary side we have the red center tap and then the blue and brown wires that would go normally to the tube plates. On the other side uh, of the transformer we have the secondary output windings. White is generally the common lead and then we have orange, yellow and green and I don't know which position those are in yet but we're going to figure that out. It'll be quite simple and obvious uh, when we're through. Okay, so this is our diagram. Now uh, I'm going to start putting in voltage over here on the secondary side. It'll be low voltage and we're going to get a much higher voltage reading uh, between the blue and brown wires. We're going to ignore the center tap and we're only going to take our readings from the blue and brown primary wires. I'm going to draw up a little chart and all of these things will be very clear on that chart. So I'm going to then be putting voltage in between the white wire and this one, the white wire and this one, and the white wire and this one. Um, as I said, I don't know the colors yet. Uh, all of this though will be clear in just a few minutes. Now normally I would use a variac and I would input say three different voltages into each of the secondary wire pairs uh, <clears throat> just for uh, accuracy sake. The more measurements you make the more accurate your outcome. But I'm going to keep it really simple today and I'm just going to use a center tapped 12 volt transformer. I'm going to hook up the primary windings here to uh, my current limiter so there's 110 volts in and then uh, I'm going to use the center tap and one of the 12 volt output uh, wires which will give me about 6 uh, volts that I'm going to put into my output transformer. We'll know exactly what the voltage output is in just a minute once I get this all set up. But if you have one of these, uh, just a plain old 12 volt center tap transformer, you can do these measurements and end up with a very good result. And here's the chart that I made up to record my data and come up with my calculations. And I should say the math here is like arithmetic, very simple. Okay, uh, division, and we're going to square a number. So we'll just put it in and multiply it times itself. Okay, now here's how the chart works. The white is common, so I'm going to connect white to orange and put in this many volts. And then I'm going to measure what the output is between the blue and brown wires of the output transformer. Next, I will input voltage between the white and yellow wire. I'll write down the voltage I put in here and the voltage I get out between the blue and brown wires here. I think you get the idea. And then finally we're going to do the white to green pair. And the voltage is going to be the same for all three because I'm going to be using that simple transformer. It'll be around 6 volts in each case. But I'm going to get a different output here depending on uh, which of these windings is uh, for the 4, 8, and 16 ohm outputs that I anticipate. Okay, I'm all wired up here and it looks like a real mess, but uh, let's go through it step by step and you'll see it's really quite quite clear. I've got my primary, the two black wires connected to a pigtail here that I'm going to plug in to the current limiter just in case some wires cross. I don't want any short circuits. I then uh, we'll be sending in 120 volts to the 12 volt center tap transformer and I've pulled out the center tap here and one of the two windings so that I'll be getting 6 volts. I hooked up probes from one of my uh, digital multimeters and I'm going to be setting it over here at AC volts so I'll know exactly what the voltage is going into my output transformer. Okay, so we're clear on that. Primary is connected 
to the current limiter, secondary, the center tap is going to go over here to the white common wire. This one's going to stay connected throughout the experiment. Okay, then the uh, one of the two 12 volt wires will be connected to my voltmeter and will come over here and be connected to one of the three output wires. I look at my chart and I, I just wrote down orange, yellow, and green. Okay, so let's go to the orange wire first. And uh, at the same time, I'm going to connect my second digital voltmeter to the brown and blue primary wires. This will be getting a high voltage output. This will measure the low voltage, probably around 6 volt input, and I'll get a much higher voltage out here. Since it's much higher, you have to be real careful that you don't touch these wires, okay, because you could get a pretty good... If you don't have two separate digital multimeters, then uh, hitch up your single one to the output of the transformer to find out what your output voltage is. It'll be around 6 some odd, 6.1 or 2 volts, something like that. And you can write it down in your chart. And then disconnect it and hook it up here to the primary output. Okay, so you can do this with a single uh, multimeter, but you'll have to hook it up here, disconnect it, and then hook it up here. Fortunately, I have two of these, so I can just leave it connected. I think all of this will start making even more sense when I start doing it. Okay, let's plug in our 12-volt center tap transformer and see that the output from the center tap to one of the two leads it's a little higher than I expected, 7.03 volts. And the output from the primary is, as expected, much higher and also dangerous. So be real careful. You don't touch those two wires. You get quite a shock. So uh, we're getting 315 volts out of the primary if we're injecting 7.02 volts into the uh, secondary. So let's write these numbers down on our chart. So our voltage input was 7.02 volts, output was 314.7 just a second ago, which is what I've written down here between the white and orange wire. I injected 7.02 volts and I got out from the brown and blue wires, 314.7 volts. I write it down. Now we disconnect uh, from inputting between the white and orange wire, and let's hook up the white and yellow wires. So now I'm injecting my 7.02 volts into the white and yellow wires, white and yellow, I'm going to write 7.02 here, and what's our output? 222.4 volts. Okay, let's write that down then on our chart. All right, white to yellow wires, 7.02 volts injected. Output between the blue and brown wires uh, of the primary of the output transformer is 222.4 volts. So far, so good. Now we'll disconnect from the yellow wire and let's connect to the green wire. There we go. Now we're injecting, oh, let's strain, 7.00 volts into the white and green wires and getting out 156.2 volts. So let's write that down. 7.0, 156.2. Okay, the hard part's done. We've gone the white to orange wire and ejected 7.02 volts, and we've gotten a reading out on the primary at 314.7. White to yellow yielded 222.4. White to green yielded 156.2. Now, the simple math. We're going to divide the big number by the little number. Okay, I'm going to use a calculator, and I'm going to fill in these three results. It's a good time to unplug 
your uh, primary of your 12 volt transformer uh, from the current limiter to avoid any type of shock hazard and then we see on our chart here when I divide uh, the primary volts out by the secondary volts applied you can see what the what the ratios are here okay that's the winding ratio in this output transformer the winding ratio between the white and orange wire and the uh, secondary is 44.83 to 1 winding ratio the white to yellow wires 31.68 and the white to green wires the winding ratio is 22.3 none of this will make any difference at this point but it's going to make a big difference in just a second because the next step is we're going to enter this number and multiply it by itself we're going to square it and write the result here square this number write it here square this number write it here alright now that uh, we have squared the winding ratio the winding ratio then between the white and orange wire was 44.83 we square it and we get something called the impedance ratio now this is the key to this whole presentation the impedance ratio and I wish they would list this on transformers it would make life a lot easier but uh, until they do we'll find that when we square the winding ratio between the white and orange wires we'll get around 2000 when we square the winding ratio between the white and yellow wires we get around 1000 and when we square the white to green wire ratio uh, we'll get around 500 now the next step is critical and it will make all of this make perfectly good sense uh, it requires that we look up in our tube manual or on the internet to find out what the ideal plate resistance is uh, in our amplifier circuit okay uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that we're gonna open up the tube manual we're gonna find that value I have viewers ask me all the time where the heck do we get the 8,000 or 5,000 or whatever you'll get for the impedance uh, uh, for the output tubes okay which would be the primary impedance of the output transformer um, I'm gonna show you now okay it's right there in black and white let's look it up it's really cute that Jack and Ollie have started communicating through the screen door uh, I'm sure they're talking about future uh, tunes they're going to collaborate on and other musical considerations uh, that uh, cats are prone to discuss in this case Casey's come out to join the conversation so we got a trio here of budding musicians it's kind of cute all three kitties are here on the back porch you see Ollie out there right now up chatting close up with uh, Jack through the screen here's an outside view of Ollie chatting with Jack while well, Tennessee lurks menacingly out by the back wall actually it's more dozing than menacing I guess let's say that our amplifier uses a pair of six V6 output tubes in push-pull mode we open our book to the six V6 page we look down all of this confusing complex data and we come over here to class AB amplifier two tubes in push-pull and we come down to a value that is going to be called effective load resistance plate to plate now it varies depending on what the plate voltage is going to be I'm not going to operate at a measly 250 volts plate voltage see it's right over here plate voltage uh, I'm going to run at around 285 so I'm going to come down here then to the effective load resistance and find that the ideal primary effective load resistance is 8 thousand ohms it's right there in black and white if we were running at a lower plate voltage it would be 10,000 ohms 
There are pages like this for 6L6s for all output tubes. And if you look down here at the effective load resistance, you will be able to find that impedance value that you need for your calculation. Let's say it's 8,000. We come to our chart. We put 8,000 in the numerator and we're going to divide 8,000 by each of these winding ratios squared, which is the impedance ratio. So we're going to divide 8,000 by the impedance ratio for the white to orange wire, white to yellow, and white to green, and we're going to write down those numbers. And once we do this division, we're going to find out the exact speaker impedance from the white to orange wires if we want 8,000 ohms of uh, effective plate load on our output tubes. Okay, so if we hook up the white to orange wires, guess what? We want a 4 ohm speaker. If we hook up the white to yellow wires, it will match an 8 ohm speaker. If we hook up the white to green wires, it matches a 16 ohm speaker. So what we have done now is map this output transformer. I can take away the cover here and we'll see that sure enough white common to orange is 4 ohms, white to yellow is 8 ohms, white to green is 16 ohms, and the primary is 8,000 ohms. So this output transformer is ideally suited for a push-pull amp using two 6V6s uh, as output tubes and if you connect a 4 ohm speaker to the white orange output it will be a perfectly matched impedance between speaker and output tubes. If you have an 8 ohm speaker you would connect to the white to yellow wires and if you have a 16 ohm speaker you'd connect white to green. We also see that the primary is rated at 25 watts, okay, so this would be an ideal output transformer for something like a deluxe reverb or something like that. Um, now let's check out a different possibility though. What if we don't want to use 6V6s, but we want to use 6L6s? Let's check out our tube manual and let's see if we can use this output transformer with 6L6s. Alright, I've opened the tube manual to the 6L6GC page and I've come down here to class AB push-pull. I look over here at load resistance and if I'm going to run a pair of 6L6GCs at let's say 450 volts plate voltage uh, my primary impedance is now 6,000 ohms. This is what uh, 6L6s uh, uh, present okay, to the output transformer. Not 8,000 ohms like a pair of 6V6s, but 6,000 ohms. Now that's going to change our chart, but let's see how we can calculate uh, whether or not this output transformer can be used with a pair of 6L6s. Now when I divide my effective load resistance of 6,000 ohms by the impedance ratio, I get 2.99. I don't have any speakers uh, with 2.99 ohms impedance. 5.98 is really not ideal. And 12.07. There are really no speakers I know of made that are going to match uh, an, uh, a 6,000 ohm uh, effective load resistance through this output transformer. So let's go back to our tube manual and see if there's a plate voltage we can operate at which will allow us to use this output transformer. Well since 6L6 GC's operating at 450 plate volts uh, really don't suit the impedance ratio of our output transformer. Uh, let's just try plain old 6L6s, okay, and uh, we'll come over here, class AB, let's come down here to load resistance, and we see at 300 
and 60 volts, which should be pretty comfortable. Uh, we've got a load resistance of 3,800 ohms. Let's enter this value on our chart, this load resistance, and see if we can come up with speakers that we can use with a pair of 6L6s operating at um, 360 plate volts using this output transformer. Also, I look down here and see that the power output is 18 watts, which is comfortably below the 25 watt uh, maximum that is stated on this output transformer. So this really looks like a winning combination. Let's see how it works out. 3,800 ohms. Well, it's good news indeed for the two 6L6s operating at 360 volts. We divide their 3,800 uh, ohm uh, effective load resistance by the impedance ratio and although the white to orange wire is, combination is not going to work look at this uh, we've got a really nice match for a 4 ohm speaker with the white to yellow wires and a great match for an 8 ohm speaker if we use the white to green wires so as you can see it is possible to come up with tube and plate voltage combinations that will work with most output transformers as long as you know the impedance ratio of the windings of that output transformer. And that impedance ratio is very simple to calculate uh, simply by injecting uh, a relatively low voltage input to the secondary and measuring the voltage output on the primary. You can use a variac, or as I did in this experiment, simply a, a plain old center tap 12 volt filament transformer. Now if you're fortunate enough to have a transformer like this one with all the data printed on it, we don't have to run the experiment where we inject 6 volts and then measure the output. You can simply use the data on the transformer to calculate the uh, impedance ratio. We'll simply use the 8,000 ohms primary impedance and the secondary impedance. In this case, let's pick 4 ohms. Okay, so it's 8,000 ohms primary, 4 ohms secondary. We'll use this simple formula. Tube load resistance, remember it was 8,000 ohms. Speaker impedance that we chose was 4 ohms we just divide and you'll get the impedance ratio for the white to orange wire of 2000 which is exactly what we found with our experiment white to orange wire impedance ratio is around 2000 so uh, if the data is on the transformer you can take a shortcut and do some simple math to determine your impedance ratio and if the data does not come printed on the transformer but in a data sheet that accompanies a transformer uh, we can still do the actual mental uh, arithmetic necessary to determine its impedance ratio in this particular case this is the Weber 1484 uh, output transformer that they make uh, they give us 4k ohms on the primary and they say that between the black common wire and the yellow it's suitable for an 8 ohm speaker. 4,000 divided by 8 ohms gives us an impedance ratio between the black and yellow wires of 500. Now, they also gave us a 4 ohm uh, speaker output, so we'll divide there. 4,000 divided by 4 ohms is a 1,000 impedance ratio between the black and green wires related to the blue and brown primary. So I've written down the impedance ratios here for the yellow to black wire and the green to black wire. Now we can use this in other ways than the diagram might imply. What if we wanted to use this output transformer with a pair of 6V6s? We've already seen that um, that would present about 8,000 ohms of primary impedance. So if this number is no longer 4K on the left, we want it to be 8K. We'll put 8K here, 
and we'll divide it by the uh, impedance ratio of the black to yellow wires. And what's 8,000 divided by 500? It's 16, isn't it? That means if we wanted to use an, uh, this with 6v6s, we could connect a 16 ohm speaker between the black and yellow leads. And we would have perfect impedance matching. How about if we uh, connect our two 6v6s with 8,000 ohms here of load resistance on the left? What uh, if we divide it by 1,000? That means we could connect an 8 ohm speaker between the black and green wires because 8,000 divided by 1,000 is 8 ohms. Uh, so we can use it with a pair of 6v6s if we connect an 8 ohm speaker here or a 16 ohm speaker here. Now nothing on this diagram would imply that you can do that. But now that you understand impedance ratios, you can alter what the diagram says, use what it says, and uh, extrapolate uh, different uses for the primary transformer than the diagram might imply. So using this diagram, you might think that you're limited to 4K on the left and 4 or 8 on the right, but instead you can go 8K on the left and 8 or 16 on the right. There's all different possibilities as long as you understand the impedance ratio. I can't resist having a pop quiz. This is the spec sheet for a 40-18105 output transformer for a Fender Bandmaster. The Bandmaster uses a pair of 6L6s in push-pull and their load resistance is about 4K, okay, 4,000 ohms of impedance. What is the impedance ratio for each of the three uh, speaker outputs? With that in mind, if I decided to use this output transformer for a pair of 6V6s with an 8K uh, load resistance, which uh, terminals would I connect a 8 ohm speaker to? Third question, would this be a good output transformer for use in a 50 watt fender basement? Fourth and final question, my grandmother dies and I inherit a pair of output tubes with a total plate resistance of 2K ohms. I also inherit a 4 ohm speaker. Now can I use my newly inherited tubes and speaker with this output transformer? If so, to what terminals will I connect that speaker? Once you write down your answers, uh, at the very end of the video, uh, I will uh, show what I think the right answers are, and you can compare yours. Meanwhile, let's go outside and take a look at what changes have been made in that 30 Ford rat rod. It's kind of a windy day, and I hope the wind doesn't interfere with the audio too much, but as you can see, the most obvious change in the car is the wheel color which I sprayed red uh, lacquer and I installed uh, baby moon hubcaps. Now this was not easy to do because these wheels believe it or not are police car spares okay these are space saver spare wheels they put like a little donut tire on them uh, so they don't take up a lot of room in um, like Crown Victorias and uh, other Ford cars like that um, the, so there's no need for hubcaps on spare tire wheels so there's no uh, rims or lugs or anything so I had to I took these off of that 40 Ford truck and to install them I had to drill through the outer layer and then using sheet metal screws on that inner flange attach them to the wheel so I thought that turned out pretty slick okay there's nothing more insolent and in your face than fire engine red wheels. Let's take a look here. Uh, as you remember, the baffles were built for the pipes. 
the 32 grill shell was installed and let's take a look inside at some of the major differences that have occurred. All right, here's the driver's side view and as you can see the visibility's pretty darn good. I put in glass in the uh, little side windows and in the back window which is no fun because when the top was chopped uh, there were all sorts of inconsistencies in the mounting surfaces for the glass. It was an absolute nightmare to uh, install the glass in this. I don't have the glass in the doors yet but um, I may do that. Uh, it would make it a little more civilized I guess. I got an antique uh, Ford uh, rearview mirror but uh, one of the main things I did was if you remember the steering um, rod up here was just a bare piece of pipe and the steering wheel could move several inches up and down which wasn't too neat so I took a piece of galvanized pipe wrapped it around the outside of the steering column and then then I used my lathe and made a nylon bushing here that fits inside the pipe so that the steering uh, pipe here uh, is steady and then using this fixed uh, steering column I was able to mount turn signals and a horn. Up here I made a little dash and I put in a GPS speedometer and I also installed, I'll show you in a minute, uh, a sensor for the gas tank and this was the gauge that went with that sensor so now I know how much gas I have or don't have. This is a uh, switch that controls the dedicated uh, electrical supply to the uh, satellite reading uh, speedometer. Uh, you actually have to have that. If any of you have one of these GPS speedometers you have in trouble let me know. I'll tell you how to fix it. Okay over here this was pretty standard but uh, the battery kept going dead. And I thought, uh, well, that's strange because it's a fairly new battery. Well, the alternator wasn't working, and I had no way of knowing that. So I put in a voltmeter, and now, uh, naturally, when you, you turn on the key and it shows about 12 volts, but when you start the car, it jumps up to 14 to show that the alternator is working. Got the nice 8-ball uh, uh, gear shift, and uh, that's about it I guess for the inside other than I made and I don't know if you can see them clearly up here brackets that support where they cut the roof this was real weak and was flapping in the breeze so I made brackets here and then I ran uh, heavy uh, good stout wood above the doors to solidify this piece here so that when you slam the doors the whole thing wasn't wiggling around and now Things are pretty rock solid. Closes like a tomb. Now before we go back outside and take a look at what's been done to the rear suspension, let's fire this up. Electric fuel pump. You don't have to go far to find the exhaust. and not stepping on the gas hard, notice how the sound actually diminishes, but at idle, you get that nice loping cam. We'll go for a ride in a future video. It's a little rough, like a buckboard, but uh, that's part of the fun. The idle is real raunchy, but when you step on the gas a little, it really kind of quiets down. Well, let's go take a look at the suspension changes. Here's the outside view. I put in tinted glass so it looked more menacing. You never know what's going on inside when the glass is tinted. Okay, let's take a look 
in the trunk and uh, you'll see some modifications I made. First let me show you. The rear end was almost dragging the ground on this thing. I lifted it uh, three and a half or four inches in the rear. I like them raked a little bit. A little higher in the back, a little lower in the front. So uh, to do that though was a whole lot easier said than done. Since the frame comes up with the car, I had to cut a deep notch in the cross member and then seal that. But if you look underneath, before I did that, I welded in a heavier gauge piece of square tubing to reinforce the area where the cut. Then the panard rod, of course, would reach uh, once this comes up. So I had to move its uh, point of attachment from here and weld on a new bracket and install it here so that it can keep the rear end square with the body. Here is the sensor for the fuel tank and uh, one other change that was necessary was to raise up the shocks to the highest hole there in the shock bracket and then tighten them up a little bit and that's how the rear end was actually lifted. Also the rear brakes weren't worth a darn so I took uh, the uh, drums off coated them with a ceramic uh, heavy-duty aluminum paint and then uh, installed new uh, brake shoes and brake cylinders. Uh, so now the rear brakes work great, although the front discs really do the vast majority of the stopping. Oh, and I forgot, one of the worst and unforeseen problems associated with ra raising the rear end was that the pinion angle was completely wrong. The nose of the uh, differential rose way up high. Uh, it was just outrageous. So I had to remove the rear end here from the car, essentially leaving it in place under the car, and adjust these uh, hairpins both top and bottom to get the pinion angled back to normal and that was pretty scary because once you separate the part of the car that's holding it up from the car a lot of bad things can happen. Fortunately none of them did. So to make a rather subtle change of raising the rear end about three and a half or four inches uh, took like two and a half days. Okay no one would believe it. You'd think you'd just go in and tighten up the springs on the coilovers. No. It's never that easy. Okay, so that's the update uh, on the hot rod at this point. Uh, lots more will get done and I will keep you posted. Well, as promised, here are the answers to the pop quiz, which I believe are correct. Uh, 2,000, 1,000, and 500. Black green, heck no, and black violet. If you had trouble with any of these questions, why don't you go back and watch a part or all of the video again and see if that doesn't help. Meanwhile, I want to thank all my Patreon patrons and PayPal contributors. Uh, you're keeping us going uh, with your generous contributions and we really appreciate it. If any of you would like to join them, please check the links that I put in the video description. Or if you have any old uh, amps or uh, a related gear laying around the house that's doing no one any good and you'd like to contribute them uh, per perhaps to be used for future videos that would be great too. Well I hope you enjoyed this instructional video um, I haven't made many lately and we'll see how this one goes over um, I also hope you enjoyed the brief uh, tour of the 1934 Ford hot rod. Uh, with that in mind uh, I hope you stay tuned We and that we'll see you in the very near future. Uh, until then, bye for now.